Filmmaker Bill Duke is back with another controversial movie. Could the Katy Perry Taylor Swift feud be over? Mary J. Blige has to pay up. Would you forego a diamond engagement ring? We got the 411 on books. And we have our motivational quote of the week, photo of the week, and more. So stay tuned. Welcome to What's the 4 in 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Monika McQueen. Hey, Monika. So Hi, I gentlemen. hear that you had your very first comedy show that you hosted. I had produced. Recently. No, that I produced. What? So, 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 yeah, I was excited. Follow Ooh. me on Instagram, Twitter. Yes. <laughs> and subscribe to them. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it was so, thank you for coming. It's the whole team came, it was such a good time. I had such a wonderful time. It was girl power, it was like so. Yay, it was. When Kizzy and her girlfriends came, they were like, oh, we're here with this woman, Kizzy <laughs> Cox. Do you know her? I was like, yeah, I know her, where is she? So I was like, she's coming. So they were like, oh, she's so sweet. She's giving everybody hugs. Thank so you, I really appreciate it. It yeah. was like dope. It was Let's awesome. Let's get on it's to awesome. this show. Yes, quick takes. All right, so remember Dark Girls, the documentary? Oh, yeah, I do. Well, it's been six years since famed director Bill Duke made a documentary about colorism in the black community. Now he's returning with the same impact and controversy through Created Equal, an independently produced legal thriller. Now, the controversial film isn't really trying to, like, break apart Catholic doctrine, but it is asking a really interesting question, and that is, should women be allowed into seminaries to study for the priesthood? Hmm? It's true. The patriarchy is crazy. It yeah, is. America, like the way it just works. It's just male dominance. It's so crazy. You yeah. know, my friend Erica Pittman was uh, featured in the Dark Girls book. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful photo of her. I'll show it to you. Yeah. Okay, okay. so Sasha Ariel Austin mm -hmm. wants uh, more diversity in the STEM a field, right? Yes. That's so, so necessary. A, so it's a 19-year-old pay student. So, mm -hmm. of course, what she did, what does she do? Of course. What do <laughs> ITOs do? They do everything. Anything right. they want to do. So she wrote a book about it. Right? Right. It's she wrote this book called Sasha Savvy Loves to Code. And it's about a 10-year-old girl that's interested in becoming a coder. That's, Isn't that so nice? That is so cool. That is so cool. She's like, I'm just going to write a book. Like, the millennials just do what I know. The power. Good comment. for you I guys. Good for you guys. Yes. So on from the millennials to Generation X, Mariah, Mariah, Mariah. Oh, my God. Word on the street is Mariah Carey bring her full-on divaness to the set of the upcoming film with Will Ferrell and Amy Poehler, The House. So according to one of her co-stars, all right, she showed up four hours late, four hours late, right? And then me, she me. wanted, you know, then she wanted her trailer to be filled with all white roses and stuffed lambs, because you know her fans are called lambs. So she wanted stuffed lambs. And remember, this is for a one-day shoot, just one day, and that's what she wanted. So she was there to play herself and demanded that the filmmakers change her song, one, because even though she had known that she was going to sing the song the whole time that day, she wanted a different song. And then on top of that, she was supposed to get shot, and she didn't want to get shot. She's like, I, I shouldn't be killed. Why can't the bullets just deflect off my wrist like Wonder Woman? So... <laughs> Does she not have the script? Like, girl, like... Poor Nick Cannon. I know he probably like, he has two kids with her. He's like, Dang. Yeah, well, you know what? Let's see if she makes it into the film. The house hits theaters on June 30th. So. Oh, trust me. She'll make it. She'll make it because she's the draw. You have to have a draw, right? They say that Beyonce wants like M&Ms and stuff. Like, they just want crazy stuff. Stuff lambs, though? I don't know. They white lambs, too, right? I bet you yes. Stuff white oh, lambs. Of course. Probably with peach. I don't know. Girl. <laughs> Katy Perry and Taylor Swift trying to bury the hatchet okay. i think well okay. at least Katy perry is saying that she's going to be the bigger person right okay. so she had this interview at the thrive Go global podcast mm -hmm. with ariana huffington mm -hmm. and what she said was you know i think that it's time that we need to just bury the hatchet so she extended the olive branch okay. and she said that um you know she's at this she says i'm ready to let it go Mm -hmm. She said, I am sorry about what I, whatever I've done, and I forgive her for whatever she's done because they have bis bigger fish to fry. It's just too many other problems in the world. And I yes. think that that's, you know, from what happened at that concert, mm -hmm. right? You know, it's yeah, true. It's, it's not like it's time. the perspective changes a little bit. Like, right. why, 
why are you beefing girls? And they're yeah. getting older now. She's 32. So I think it's just about time she's like, you know what, let's move on. Well, you know? well, let's move on. So, but let me tell you what I would not move on about. What? That little Ken do and Mary J. Blige. So let me tell y'all. Be mad? You're not mad. Am I, I know. gonna be mad? No, you know why? Because you <laughs> think that it's okay for her to pay him spouse support because you, you me? don't. What? Oh, Girl, you don't. You oh, okay. know oh, that oh, I went that in was on Courtney. This story. That was Courtney. Okay, that was Courtney. Because one of y'all was like giving me fever. No, we talked about it. Well, I was like, it. he's wilding out for that 130k a, a yeah. month. He was so trying to get that's out. That's what of he her. wanted, right? He wanted yeah. 130k. He was cheating. Really, boy. But anyway, so this is what happened. This is the whole tea. So Mary J. Blige, his name is Martin Kendu Oxix, right? Uh -huh. Okay. So she ended up having to pay thirty thousand dollars a month, mm. right, to keep him in the lifestyle that he's accustomed to, mm. which is down a hundred thousand dollars. At least it is that, something. right? <laughs> and then he, she has to pay his legal fees, which is like a total, and and it like backs up to two thousand and sixteen, September okay. two thousand and sixteen. So a grand total of two hundred and thirty five thousand okay. dollars. She has to like lay out at first, but that's nothing to Mary. And you know what, Mary, the songs that you are going to sing, <laughs> all this bull crap, like. Yeah. Yeah. You like you, but the she's thing is, she's paid for the next like three she's albums. She's paid, okay. but you know what? So my daughter, we were talking about this. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter, my daughter was like, "So, well, when does the thirty thousand dollars stop?" And I was like, "Until he gets married." She was like, "Well, why would he get married?" Oh no, temporary, temporary. Is, is it temporary? It's temporary. Yes. Until when though? So I don't, I don't when? know. But they said for a total two hundred thirty-five thousand. So. No. Whatever that is. So they might have to go back. It's going to be and retroactive. So you're saying there's not going to be anything going forward. I think we need to read. They'll, they'll go back to court probably for that. But yeah. for now. I thought yeah. it was ongoing because normally spousal support is ongoing. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just for now. So, oh, Ken Do is going to be available. Who's going to mess with him now? He's going to get him sugar mama. His broke self. Okay. TriStar and Olympic gold medalist Sonia Richard Ross opens up about her abortion recently. So Richard Ross discusses this time in her life in her memoir, new one, called Chasing Grace. Now at the time, she was engaged to her now husband, Aaron Ross, who played for the New York Giants. Now the couple made the decision together to have the abortion, so at least it was like a joint decision. And a choice stemmed from Richard Ross not wanting to let down her sponsors, her family, and church by having a child out of wedlock. Very so, unfortunate. So have an abortion? Yeah, so she didn't want to let them down. So that's that was her choice. That sounded and judgy when I said that, right? No, because I just think church and abortion. Like I think the church would be like, all right, just yeah. had a baby. You know, okay, but some some don't. Depends on your congregation. But for her, I guess. And right. you know, she was in the middle of her career, and it was two thousand eight, and she was you know training totally for the Olympics. Get that. So the three time Olympian told Sports Illustrated, now not only does she have an abortion, that abortions are so common in the track world that, in her words, quote. I literally don't know another female track athlete who hasn't had an abortion, and that's sad. Close so, quote. So now she's just going to bring out everybody? <laughs> she's she calling them all on the carpet like, you I had an abortion, you had an abortion, you had an abortion. Wait a minute. Tell your own damn business. Tell your own story. Really? Like, what? 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 I've been a hoe. I don't know anybody that oh, was a no. hoe. Like, really? Really? Listen. Why would you do that? No. Listen. What? Listen, what? No. what does that mean? She was Come with her in. man, his boyfriend, longtime boyfriend, now it's her husband. So, so don't bring anybody else to the carpet. What does that have to do with anything? Because think about that. So now, now, when you're but interviewing you, another track star, you're like, you know, but, you remember that quote that the woman... No, you can just say him? she wasn't talking about me because I don't know that girl. No, okay. you got to lie. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? That, that, no, no, listen, girl. Like certain stuff, if you want to just come out, out, out on the carpet or mm -hmm. out the closet... I understand. Sometimes you just want to be free. I don't have to pull you out too. If I'm gay, I don't but, have to say Kizzy and I are both gay. <laughs> but listen, the thing is, no, the whole thing is, she didn't name names. She didn't name names. So you can always She claim. said everyone. She didn't name names. So at the end of the day. <laughs> you know what Twitter did. So I saw any picture that she's with a track star person having a conversation, they're talking about abortion. <sighs> So silly. I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, so keep it locked. When we come back, we're bringing you more of What's Poppin'. Stay tuned. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy-saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money.
Welcome back to What's the 411. Now we have stories that are popping. Uh, yeah. So I found this article, Glamour Magazine, entitled, mm -hmm. My Partner Proposed to Me with a $35 Engagement Ring and the World Didn't End. Oh, oh but okay. For me, it would have ended. <laughs> ended. No, the world didn't, but the relationship would have I don't know, first of all. So it got me to thinking about the age old tradition, you know? Okay, right. Right, right, because I remember my girlfriend saying this, and it's so true. She was like, because my ring is smaller than your ring, does that mean my man loves me less than your really? man loves me? Okay. Like, she totally had that conversation with me before, and I guess we were 20 or something, and I was probably like, yeah, in my mind. But, <laughs> so what, let's pose the question to the audience and to you. Would you be happy if your partner, you love him to death, boom, everything, if he get in he proposed to you with a thirty-five dollar engagement ring. What would you? What would you? Oh do? my gosh! Only if I picked it out or something. Okay, because I mean, it depends on why he got me thirty-five dollar ring. In the article, the woman was saying, "Listen, they were never really into diamonds. You know, it wasn't really their thing. And the more they thought their about thing? it, their thing, their thing, their thing. She was like, the more she thought about it, the more she was like, listen, you know, I don't even really." need a diamond like that like what i actually want is this thing called a shadah ring i don't know if that's how you pronounce it but it's like this irish symbol of what she said friendship loyalty and love and that's what he bought her and she's like she loves it because it symbolizes perfectly their marriage and what she wants it to embody this is a black so, girl no oh this is not a girl <laughs> But she, but she know what All she the black said. people knew. No, it's okay. But what she, what she said was, and what I, what I did agree with her on hippie was ass. that this is a hippie ass story. She said, "Listen, she's like, okay, we can spend a gajillion dollars on a diamond ring, you but right. what about our student loans? What about having money to travel and do things together? That money now, they can take that." And put it towards experiences that they want together, as opposed to ring, which is like, okay, a ring. You see the tenacity that you're. You're reporting this story. You see this, right? Yeah. So your potential mate is going to take this clip. The thing is, listen to me, I've never liked diamonds. Ever since I learned about conflict diamonds, blood mm -hmm. diamonds, I've never wanted a diamond, ever. I was so like, you, you don't you can, want a diamond? Not at all. I don't oh. want a diamond because there's no way for you to figure out Who's where it's what? really coming, coming from. from. They say they certify, but we don't know. You know what I mean? And that's like... <laughs> I don't judge you, Onika. It's all good. I don't judge me either because I want a diamond. <laughs> like, and because I, I know that I have been socialized to mm -hmm. think that this is something that's good. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, when I look at women, I'm looking at their fingers. It's just okay. something, I don't know. No, I think, it's, I think it's a beautiful thing. If it's you and your man or your partner decides, you know what, diamonds are what you value. Why of course, gotta why not? Why, why I got to be the one to take the weight and be all socially conscious and stuff? No. <laughs> I'm going to be blind right here on this Ray Ray. Me? No. Ray Ray? Oh, Ray Ray back? What happened? What happened to what's his name? I'm going to do Ray Ray. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do That's... I'm going to do Oh, you done thrown. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do I'm back. Gonna, All I'm right. going to put the dog on ring in my own name. I'll be paying for it myself. But we're okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Girl, moving on. To the okay, social so social media, okay. right? So social media. Parents generally want their children to go to the best colleges, mm -hmm. right? Of course, of course, I do too, yeah. right? However, with the presence of social media, their children are sometimes unwittingly sabotaging their own opportunities, right? right? I got this. I, I really I read this article too about the same same thing. So Harvard recently ranked acceptance offers. Uh, to groups of students who got caught posting offensive memes mm -hmm. on their private Facebook account. So what they're doing is, in the acceptance process, they're looking at the children's social media, mm -hmm. right? That is that I don't even know if that is like, mm. like, cause what's privacy? Right. Right. No, I agree. I mean, I think it's because it, I know it, jobs do it now. Right, and I think that's this. That's the whole thing. I don't know that you can necessarily like watch your kid every time they go online i mean they're on my yeah and they block you, you as a parent a lot of times i know i'm a blocked parent yeah so it's like that's the problem but i think when i when i was really looking into this a little bit more the things that they were posting about were really outrageous they but were it's posting really about, young people like, they're not that mm -mm, I, I don't use that i don't i do not think that's an excuse pedophilia child abuse like they were posting about pedophilia child but abuse. no but you and, but think about what you're saying right so no. you're saying they're posting about pedophilia and they're t 
posting about child abuse, but those memes, they have these, memes are really offensive. That's the whole theme of a meme. You take somebody crying, you take some, some outlandish photo, and then you, and you change, and you change the content of it to make it a, make it a joke. And, but the children thinking about it, they're, 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 I, their frontal lobe is not even fully developed. I, like, it's, 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 I think it's sad. I get that, but at the same time, okay, so even if you look at other cases where people are like posting, they're in college, and they have like ropes and, and they're pretending to hang their friends, their black friends and stuff like that. I'm like, there's something wrong with you. Like at that age, you need to understand that there's some things that you just don't joke about. And I think that's when you, you don't know as that a, though, Kizzy. When people are having ropes and pretending I to know, like hang right. their, their black, no. <laughs> their quote unquote no, black friends no. or doing like these racist things and thinking it's funny. I think that just has to do with not having those values instilled in you that this is wrong. So I think that's what you really need to focus on, not so much social media, because your social media reflects what you're doing in real life and what you're thinking in real life. Right, but think about it. When we were growing up, when we did not have these Facebooks and stuff, the stuff that we talked about with our friends, the stuff that we joked about with our friends, mm -hmm. their friends are on social media. So it's it was very inappropriate. And sometimes if I was judged on what I thought at 17 and 18, thought, having a conversation with you, it's the same thing that they post, then then like I would have been shit out of luck. It's just not fair. I mean, but the thing what is, what about that's privacy? What I what? think people need, I think you need to really instill in your children. It is not the same. Social media is not real life. Social media is forever. It is there. Like you said, it was a private Facebook page, so they thought it was private, but it's not private. Nothing is private online. So it's a new world. We just have to mm -hmm. teach them like, what you say with your friends, you know, offline, different than what you post on social media. It follows you forever. This, yeah. is a, this is a very hard lesson for them to learn, but it's better they learn it now than down the line when they're losing a job and have kids yeah. they have to take care of. They're losing rankings, that's sad. That's yeah, sad. yeah. That's but, you know what else is sad? John Singleton. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> director John Singleton. What happened? He was initially tapped to direct the new Tupac movie, All Eyes on Me. You know that? Yes, we were talking about that last Friday. week. Friday's going to come out. Unfortunately, the Boys in the Hood director exited the biopic very vocally. He said, quote, the people involved aren't really respectful of the legacy because, you know, he knew Tupac personally, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So enter Benny Boom Douglas. He was selected to direct after Singleton dropped out. Now that All Eyes on Me is hitting theaters, Singleton has continued to be critical of the movie. Why? I, I, listen, he said, you know what, quote, this is what Singleton said. They were trying to tell me, me, how to make a movie about Pac. Come on now, really? So I was like, no, I didn't back out gracefully. I was like putting them on their backs. I don't have to speak on that anymore. Y'all just see it when it comes out. I don't have to see it. Come on, it ain't me. So I don't have to see it. That's what he said, right? But it's not about you, babe. It's and about the legacy of Tupac Shakur. And exactly. So now you're talking about the credibility of the other director, exactly. right? So now you're not really, you're not talking about the back end, the financing. You're mm -hmm. talking about how how his vision is going to be. That's a different thing. It is, and he's he's. He, I mean, he's really insulting everybody who's involved in mm -hmm. the movie. And so Benny Boom, in an interview with GQ finally addressed Singleton's criticism, saying, in part, so I'm just going to read part of this, I know John, and this is the first time I'm speaking about it publicly, but I feel like we have brothers who you think are supposed to support and they don't support. The community we have of directors of color is very small. I'm not saying you're supposed to go out and cheerlead for everybody, but there needs to be support. And support sometimes just means not saying, saying anything. anything. Yeah. I would never take shots at my brother. So what do you think about that? Do you think he has a point? He does have a point because mm -hmm. it is right because it's yeah. only few, it's a few of them it's a few right mm -hmm. we are a minority and in so many arenas right and and yeah but i but i don't think he was really taking a shot at boom i think that he's just you know but look what he feeling, says it ain't me it ain't <laughs> so me. i don't have to that's, see but that's ego like talking that. right yeah so that's exactly ego talking i think you're that's absolutely really right. not a shot at boom that's a e that's mm -hmm. ego talking right so i, I mean i get it and I think yeah. also with Singleton, I think also he feels like since he knew Tupac, he doesn't have that, that distance. And what Benny Boom was also saying is like, you know what, I have that distance. I understand that was your friend, you wanted to be a certain way, but I have the kind of distance necessary. You, yeah, because you know he's probably I mean? to be too emotional to about it, yeah. right? There's yeah. going to be, yeah, 
Yeah. So he's a, he's a creative, right? So creators mm -hmm. are very vocal and emotional about their stuff, right? Yeah. So and you he, cannot say John Singleton, you need to mm -hmm. not be passionate. Right. Right. On one hand, and then be very passionate, making a boys in the hood, right? So he's, it, you yeah. got some creatives, you got to just let them be. Right out. But you know what, Benny Boom, I think he did strike the right tone. I think he, you know, said the right thing. Like, you know what, if you don't like it, just don't say anything. You know, Right, because the media would have loved to peg them against each other. Because, you know, it you only know, could Singleton be one. is making a movie, right? He wants to make his mm -hmm. own movie about Tupac. Well, do it. So, we'll see. We'll do see it. what happens. Get the funding. Yeah, Cole Peel. Cole, what's that guy's name? What's his name? Yeah. What's his, like, what's what's like Jordan, what is it? Jordan Peel? Jordan Peel, yeah. Yeah, call him. He got $200, $200 million, boy. <laughs> call him. Yeah, that, yeah he, got, he got that money now. And our photo of the week is a photo of some young men who attended Chicago's Urban Prep. Now, for the eighth, eighth consecutive year, Chicago's Urban Prep sent 100% of its students to college. Congratulations. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. <laughs> mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner okay. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. The Book Expo America just ended and the Harlem Book Fair is coming up. So let's check in with Troy Johnson and Ruth Morrison with the 401 on books. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts, stop the wrecks. Welcome to the 411 on books and um, Mr. Troy Johnson is here. So um, a lot has happened since the last time we got yeah, together. It really has. Yeah. There are a number of events that are coming up and one where you're going to be honored. So why don't you talk about that? Oh, there's a, a group called the African Americans on the Move, African Americans on the Move Book Club, AAM bc.com and they um, host the annual award ceremony mm -hmm. and I've been honored by being um, nominated for literary activist of the year which you should get <laughs> so you know us literary activists mm -hmm. aren't competitive with each other but I certainly do appreciate the recognition and she's also um, so what makes what she's doing important is because um, a lot of us are really yourself included, are really doing a lot to support books, black books, black authors. And, um, you know, those efforts, it's important to recognize them, to at least know that people appreciate what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it fuels you and, and makes it easier to, to continue to fight. She's also nominated um, Harlem-based um, editor extraordinaire and writer uh, Malika Adero. So um, Malika Adero's been honored. She's also uh, nominated Curtis Bunn, okay. who is uh, the who runs the National Book Club Conference, which is a conference that um, is held every year um, that brings book clubs together, and you know a couple days of author signings and readings and seminars and things of that nature. This sounds so, like it's going to be a great event. Yeah, so it, it should be a really good event. And I'm looking forward to it. So that's uh, this coming weekend, actually. Right. And then closer to home. Closer next to home. Month. Yeah. In July, July 15th, we have the Harlem Book Fair. Mm -hmm. Harlem Book Fair is another institution that, um, if they're, they're pretty close to 20 years now. Mm -hmm. they, they start, their first one, I believe, was in 1998 in the, at the front of this Harlem State Office building. Mm -hmm. And now they've and they moved. they've grown tremendously. And, yeah, they've grown quite a bit. And they've moved uh, uptown to the Schomburg up on 135th Street, typically between Lenox and 7th or Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard. And um, there's uh, panel readings and street vendors and booksellers. And um, so it's a terrific event. If you're in Harlem or nearby, you, mm -hmm. should, you should certainly Definitely check it out. Definitely should check it out. Mom, 
Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. My motivational quote of the week is from Robert Byrne, and I, I quote, the purpose of life is a life of purpose, end quote. So thank you, Denise Hurley, who posted it on our Facebook fan page. Uh, and if you want your motivational quote posted, you never know. We may just mention it on the show. Just put it on our What's the 411 fan page, and we may just mention you. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the Form 1, and now we're telling you what's up in Brooklyn. Where Brooklyn at? Where Brooklyn at? Where Brooklyn at? <laughs> Biggie. All right, the decal market is coming soon, y'all. Located in the area of the old Albee Square Mall, remember okay. there? Mm -hmm. The decal market is poised to usher in a new era of culinary delights. It will showcase 40 food vendors who will reflect the cultural and ethnic diversity of Brooklyn. The decal market will sport a show kitchen, cocktail bar, and daily live programming, and it aims to be one of the largest food and entertainment centers in all of New York City. So, I'm gonna amazing. need a cocktail bar. That, that sounds yeah, good. That, 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 that sounds good. So after you've eaten at the decal market, you can head over to Metro Tech Commons, mm -hmm. where you can get your exercise on by easing into a week of yoga. Okay. So provided by Mark Morris Dance Group, a one-hour sessions will take place Tuesday mornings from 7:30 to 8:30 oh, from June. <laughs> <laughs> it is early from June right. to August on the northwest end of the Commons in the grassy area, and. We be sure to bring your yoga mats because oh. they're not going to provide them. Oh, nice. And a skeevy anyway because... Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's you, true. Bring your that's own stuff. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. Now, if yoga isn't your thing, though, got something else. On Wednesday mornings, you can get pumped up for the day with a boot camp workout with RockFit Plus. These one-hour classes will focus on building strength, endurance, and stability. Classes will take place in front of 5 Metro Tech Center on Wednesday mornings, again early, 7.30 to 8.30 a.m. from June through August. All necessary equipment will be provided. So that's oh, what's up. Oh, that's really nice. Go ahead, Brooklyn. Get your fit on. Yes. Get your grub on. Get your gentrification on. Because <laughs> all, all the prices is going up. I'm not going to be all living in Albany. I'm oh, just saying. Oh, God. Don't say it. <laughs> oh, my God. So that's going to do it for this week's edition of What's the Form 1, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. Get out of here. That was I so know. fast. I know. Uh, I know. Well, until next week, check out our website, www dot what's the 411.com and remember to hit us up on facebook instagram and twitter and subscribe to our youtube channel what's the 411 tv yeah. please check us out on all our social media outlets and we may just might mention you on our show yes i'm kizzy cox and on behalf of monika mclean thank you for spending time at what's the 411 until next week <laughs>